Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the brewery uh, for the first time in 2023 and as you can see I've got my big old uh, warm hat on and loads and loads of layers because it's absolutely freezing in here. When I came in this morning it was 2.2 degrees unfortunately the pipes weren't frozen because it was minus 4.5 outside last night. And the reason I'm in the brewery, um, the date now being the 17th of January, is because it's far too cold for me to do any of the extension work, the building work that I'm doing at home. And secondly, we've also run out of a few lines of beer over the Christmas period, um, which is good, but you know, we are in the second stroke third week of January now, so it's not like we ran out that badly that I had to come in and uh, and get some brews on immediately. So we're here to do, this week, six back-to-back -back batches of vacant gestures. You can see which one we've sold out the most of. Then we'll be doing some best bitter, and then some proof of concept. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take you off the little tripod thing I've got there, and we'll have a walk around the brewery, and we'll have a look what's uh, changed since the last video. Probably not a lot. So the brew kit is silent at the moment because we're actually 18 minutes into a Whirlpool uh, hop stand and the temperature of that, as you can see, is 76 degrees. Wanted to be 80, but I'm a little bit off. That's fine. So what's been going on here? Shall we just widen the shot a little bit so you can see everything? Well, not a lot really since uh, December. So we've had a bit of a tidy up. Let's take you into the workshop first. We've still got a ton of grain there. I've taken a few bags off it. In the workshop, we've still got the canning machine, the labeling machine. We've got some bags of dextrose down here, and we've got some building materials at the back, obviously for the projects at home. I'd like to say a massive thanks to everyone who supported us and bought some cans of beer online. Um, the web shop is still a work in progress, uh, and I keep saying this all the time. I'm looking at better ways to do things, and I'm looking at also getting all the recipes that we've brewed here at Harrison's Brewery onto the website for you guys to download and brew at home if you can't get any cans of beer. Obviously, if you're in the UK, you can whatever we've got in stock, you can still buy and we'll ship it to you. That would be great. I've had a few requests also for shipping abroad and to Europe and the States. It's still a no-go until we hopefully at some point rejoin the single market with the EU or something changes. Forget it. It's not going to happen. It's not commercially viable anymore, um, which is unfortunate. So the best I can do for you guys who want to try the beers is get the recipes online. And I think I brewed 32, 34 different beers here at the brewery but I've only got about 15 to 20 recipes up there. So there are quite a few to go on. Um, I will get round to it. I'm slowly getting there. So Gemma's taken a few beers off today, going back to brewery proceedings. And some of these here are on gas, carbonating up. And uh, they'll be on for a few days until they hit the right equilibrium with CO2. And then they can go next door. We've got pipes hanging off the wall over there. I don't know if you can see. That's because we did have to move one of the chiller units that keeps the cold rooms cold to take over from a broken down glycol chiller over there in the corner. So we've got a replacement for that now, but it hasn't been installed yet. So we're still waiting. Fortunately, because it's so cold in here, we don't need any cold in the cold rooms. So everything's just sitting here at ambient. The beer is down at whatever temperature it is, about two to four degrees, which is fine. In the Firmzilla, we still have the barley wine. It's still sat at 10.57. It's been like that since October, November. It hasn't moved. Looks like she's going to be a tipper. That's unfortunate, but it was a pilot kit brew, so no biggie. But it's probably going to taste a little bit like treacle. So we've got hops in the hop store. In here we've got some cases of proof of concept and we've also got a, another 
palette of pale malt because the price rises on pale uh, and uh, brewing malts came in at the start of the year so before Christmas I ordered some extra and I also did exactly the same thing with some cleaning chemicals the caustic price went up before the end of the year so we've got a stock of chemicals in there just to keep us going until things stabilize uh, so we've got beer in there we've got 18 casts of bitter half of that came out today we've got 13 stout we've still got half a pallet of porter half a pallet of mild and then in here we've got a pallet of proof and a little bit of coconut shy and this is all that we've got left of vacant gesture and that came out of tanks yesterday uh, so what am I doing? I brewed yesterday into FV8. Today is going into FV7. And we'll be filling all these for the rest of the week. I might grab some footage if you're lucky. We've got some stuff here from home and from the pub. So we've got a twin um, Perry or Parry a deep fat fryer there. So... Our chef said he doesn't need four fryers in the kitchen, he can get by with two, so that's good. Hopefully reduce the electric bill in the kitchen a little bit. This is my beer fridge from home that used to sit in the porch, so that's here, awaiting the build to be completed. And this is the replacement chiller that I took a bit of a punt on. I got it delivered on a pallet from an eBay seller. Um, this is the only one that we've got, actually, that doesn't hook up to... An external heat dump it has an heat, heat exchanger and fan in the bottom not a heat exchanger um, a condenser in the bottom so that will be kicking its heat into the brewery whereas the other ones that we have they have these external heat dumps I've got one set up here temporarily which is kicking its heat into the brewery incidentally but most of these I've got four of them around the pub and the brewery and they're sat outside so in the summertime when they're most needed the heat is out of the building and they're not kind of giving a negative feedback when they're trying to cool tanks down some uh, dirty kegs there that won't wash in same here dirty casks and then we've got the two thousand litre uni tanks and I must say the more I look at these, the more I'm falling in love with them. The manufacturing quality of these tanks is extraordinary. I mean, just looking at the welds. And then I've been putting my fingers into the holes, as you would. And just feeling how, how smooth all of these welds are. And there's not a rough edge in sight. Not a bug trap to be found. So I'm really looking forward to commissioning these tanks at some point in the future. But where they're going to live and how we're going to fill them... I'm not 100% sure yet. So in the corner behind the steps, you can see that we've got this chiller taking the uh, slack up from the that wooden box over there, which used to be the old one. I built that at Idle Valley Brewery back in 2013, 2014. So it's almost given me a decade worth of work and it's been cooling for. 500 litre tanks so it's not done too bad this evo 70 here just chills two of them but i'm hoping to get rid of both of those and run all of the eight 500 litre tanks off one or two of these um these coolers here which they are fantastic and what i like about it is that they're relatively mobile so you can move your tanks around if you need to i'll just move these bottles of beer and i'll show you so these have come from a friend of mine, a farmer who lives locally and he's been to pick some beer up off me today and he always brings me a couple of his home brews because he's got a lovely brewery which is almost as big as some micro breweries that I've seen. So thanks for that Dave, I'm sure you'll be watching. But uh, yeah what I like about these is they're mobile so they've got wheels on them particularly if we don't have the external heat dump and we use the internal heat dump process then these can be just wheeled up to the tank that we want to cool connect two pipes to it and plug it into my control boxes which you've seen me build brewery temperature controllers 
is the name of the video if you want to search the channel and learn how to build one of these. And then this will then take care of all the cooling and heating of whatever tank you hook it up to. I'll just stick that back over there for now. So I think we've covered all bases. Um, like I said, not a lot really has changed. I'm just doing what I have to do uh, to keep the business ticking over during these quiet times. And um, it's going to be a quiet, quiet uh, few months, I think, until summertime kicks in and uh, people, you know, get that warm sun on their back and start thinking about beer gardens and going out and enjoying themselves again. But uh, in the meantime, we have to uh, do what we can do in January. If you are doing something silly like dry Jan, um, you know, just bear in mind that this is the worst uh, times that the hospitality industry has had to endure for many years. And I'm not just saying that because that's the trade I happen to be in now. It genuinely is. With everything combined, inflation and... Uh, cost of energy and everything else it's really tricky so you know if you want to contribute to charity like Macmillan or something like that you can do that without having to um, help nail the lid shut on the coffin of the hospitality industry at the same time everything in moderation folks so spread your drinking out through the year but I can tell you now we're going to see lots and lots of places in the first few months of this year closed down because of how poor cash flow has been over Christmas as well. So fingers crossed everything uh, picks up and, you know, I'm, I'm still optimistic. We're, we'll still be here in the summer and hopefully many years beyond. So I'm going to wrap this one up and uh, stick around. Uh, I have done quite a lot of building on the extension project at home. The only trouble is I've been that busy doing it. I haven't had time to pick up the camera. So I promise I will do an update there for you so you can see how far along we've got and you can take the mickey out of um, how I've laid the bricks and whatever else. But we are, we are advancing at a rate of knots. So I can see that this alarm is about to go off at the 30 minute mark, which will coincide with me finishing this video. So thank you very much, guys. We'll see you on the next one. And... Uh, yeah, Happy New Year.